is there anything actually good in the shop this time? Well, let's find that out. First of all, obviously, we're going to start off in the draw section. And no, there is no good draws this time. So let's move on. And we have a new event called the Iron Fest, where you can get quite a bit of rewards. Most of them are going to be crates, so not really all that great, even though gold and credit boosters are going to be very useful. The crates are not very nice. So is the Thief 5A this thing? is not worth purchasing whatsoever, so ignore that at best. Obviously, if you have access to the event points, then you can buy something. But otherwise, I would recommend against purchasing something like this, because again, we have even more crates here and nothing of much value. And then the offer section, well, more crates, more crates. I'm not going to talk about this event. Um, this is point. We've got the Season 1 tanks here. Terribly overpriced. Do not buy that whatsoever. And the resources are just credits this time, so we can skip that. And we go to the actual important section. Now we have, again, total draw I already talked about, which is terrible. Don't play that. And the MX M454 draw, which is also not going to be worth it. Now, the MX is a solid vehicle, but it does have quite a lot of weaknesses, such as being absolutely massive. I w personally would recommend against this vehicle, especially if it's in a draw and not in the regular shop right now. So, we got that done. We also have the Storm of Steel right here with the camera and the object 452K. Now, the object is, in my opinion, quite a big waste of space, especially if the 752 also exists, because you don't need this thing whatsoever. Obviously, the third armor is very good. You can't really pen it. The lower plate's massive, though, which you can pen quite easily. And the guns, I mean, 2300 DPM and 460 alpha damage, it's fine. The camera, however, is quite a lot better for tier 8 than the object is for tier 9. However, unfortunately, the Chimera on its own is 8.5k, and even though the Chimera is quite good, it's not 8.5k good. I mean, that is about the maximum I would ever consider paying for a vehicle like this. So if you really want the Chimera right now, and you don't want to wait for a better offer, then I guess you have to take this now. 8.5k is still the maximum range that is acceptable for a vehicle like this. The advantage is obviously is going to be the alpha damage of 440 for a medium tank. The armor is... Good enough. I mean, you can pen the sides around the gun mantlet. The gun mantlet's pretty strong. Upper plate can still be penned. So the armor works if you keep the vehicle moving back and forth. But if you do get hit, you can get penned quite easily around the turret. So make sure to keep the vehicle moving. Trade fight in this tank, right? 440 alpha damage for ideally less than that. So be sure to also, for example, go hold down with the 10 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle has. So it is a good tank. I can recommend it, but the price is not really that great. And then we have the Triple Chieftain Bundle. That's a scam. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about this because it isn't even worth it to talk about, so just ignore that. So we got, we got three chieftains. But well, we don't. We only have one chieftain, which is also gonna get changed very soon. So it's a bit of a dilemma here because if you now buy it and you've never had it before and you really like the chieftain in its current form. You're going to get disappointed once it gets changed to the Hesh ammunition that it is going to have later on in the next update. So, yeah, it is a, still a good tank. It does require quite a bit of skill to pull it off. It's not as easy to play as a Concept 1B or a Super Conqueror, uh, but generally it is still a very good vehicle. Unfortunately, it is going to get ruined, so I just don't recommend it at this point. And then we have the Tank Hunters, and one of which I will play later. I'm going to have a look at the G-Saur. Now, 12,000 for these two is hilariously overpriced. 10k is the maximum that I would accept. And uh, the Kroniak Panzer, it's a camping tank. Like, you cannot play this thing frontline and expect to live for longer than a minute unless you're extremely skilled. Uh, so you have to sit in the back with this vehicle. The accuracy on this thing is insanely good at 0.25. Uh, it does have uh, 8 degrees of gun depression as well, so it is the ultimate sniping tank sitting at the back. But obviously, 350 alpha damage, not really that good for a tank store of this type. So, overall, I don't recommend it. It also doesn't have any armor. It does have good mobility, though, so I personally don't recommend picking up this vehicle. But I'm going to have a look at the GCO later and its stats as well. So then, that brings us down here to the T-4485 for 5,000 gold. That is hilariously overpriced. Don't buy that whatsoever. Because, listen, it, it's still here. This is still here. I made a video about it. If you want to watch that video about the 752, uh, get more detail about it. That's uh, I can recommend this quite a lot. And if you look at the price here, 30 euros on this bundle. Let me scroll up a little bit. We have 36 here. 
Um, so you're paying a little bit more for two tanks, yes, but you're significantly downgrading the tier 9. So I think the, the, the 30 euros for the 752 is still somewhat fair right here. And then we have the Soviet Scout, uh, the 274A, which is a decent vehicle. I mean, for a Soviet medium, it is a decent vehicle. The 590 is slightly better, the Object 590. This thing has 185 millimeters standard penetration, which is awful for a premium tank. You don't want that. This should be the price for two tier eights, but that's not the case here, and I personally don't recommend it. So now, let's have a look at the G Sword. 7,500 gold for this vehicle, which is, I think, quite reasonable. The DPM of this vehicle is 2,400, and that is quite decent with 248 millimeter standard penetration and 350 alpha. But this vehicle has Hesh premium rounds, which means 440 alpha damage on the premium and also only 170 penetration. So only for good players right here, because you don't have any premium shells that give you extra boost and penetration. Now, the weapon handling of this thing is quite excellent with 1.5 seconds aim time, 0.33 dispersion, and 9 degrees of gun depression. That is pretty good. Obviously, the dispersion can be better, but this is a two-shot autoloader, so it does only really matter how good the aim time between shells is going to be. Once you aim the first one, the second one has to be good as well. Let's have a look at the mobility, because power to weight ratio of 14 is okay, not great, but it is a tank stroke with a fully traversable turret and a two-shot autoloader, so that's kind of acceptable. Obviously, mobility is not great. How about the armor? The armor of the G-Saur is uh, not very there, unless you're fighting it from very extreme angles, and even then, it is pretty much... Very easy to pen this vehicle, but this is one of the tank splits that we're talking about, so you can still bounce off it in some cases, but generally this vehicle has no noticeable armor whatsoever, and it can be penetrated pretty much anywhere besides from at obscure angles when with obscure shots. So most of the time, if you fight at this vehicle, if you shoot at it straight, you are gonna pen pretty much every single shot, so just make sure, hit the lower plate, hit the upper plate, hit the flat plates on the turret right here, and on the side as well, hit the flat side of the turret, and also shoot the back here, um, because obviously that does have this spaced plate, but the armor is so thin that you're not really gonna even get, pull off a side scrape accidentally, so the armor on this vehicle is, except for, well, stray shots, basically non-existent. And here we go with a G-Saur battle. Now, obviously, I've played three battles. I'm going to show you the best two. And I've also tried to play this vehicle extremely aggressively, like just peak anything, just to also show a little bit that despite it not having the greatest mobility and not having the greatest of armor, you can still get really great results out of this vehicle while playing aggressively as well. Now, why am I on this side in the G-Saur? Well, I know that we have a massive disadvantage on the other side of the map. There's four versus three over there, and there is probably going to be more over there as well, because we have two heavies, they have one heavy. The GSO enemy is probably going to go over there as well, just like that, which means that if I go over there as well, I'm not creating an advantage. I'm just bolstering up a disadvantage, and you don't want to do that. You always want to find the advantage and fight there. Like, our heavies here, they're playing terribly because they should have pushed forward towards me as well a lot earlier. Unfortunately, I didn't I take another shot from the CDA. Completely unnecessary there if the heavies would have moved and saw the opportunity. Now, four versus six, which is really terrible. And the, obviously, those he mediums there played into a disadvantage, and you don't want to do that. Because here's the thing. If I go over there, it's a four versus six or four versus five. It's still a disadvantage. You don't want to bolster out a disadvantage. You always want to find the advantage, right? Because if I'm over there, I'm also dead. So... Not so great. Now, we're going to set up up here. Obviously, we do have the high ground. High ground is very important. The enemy do have most of the map under control now. But to get to where we are, it is going to still be quite tricky. Four of them have to cross a lot of open space. And that is what I'm trying to watch right here. Obviously, don't want to take a shot. That is going to get me spotted too early. And uh, now, we have one more lost right there in the form of the AT-15. I have no idea how he managed to die that quickly. But if you have... Four mediums firing at you, then that's what's going to happen. Is he going to go for the Skoda right here? That shot almost went too low, but it is good enough to get him right there. And I took another shot from the side there from the Defender. And now, I have to be very careful. The Progetto over there and the Karo. 
are my teammates. I'm very low. I'm going to have to play off them in a way because if I don't, I'm going to get shot at and die. I don't want to get focused. Now, I see the defender. I, before seeing the defender, I know the defender is focusing on the Karo, which means I can peek this defender. Just straight up go ahead and put two shots into him because the defender is now empty and the Karo is attacking him. Obviously, the Karo has also been shot at in the back by the GSO, which is not really that ideal. Now we're going to have to, again, try and double-team this defender who's still focusing on the Karo right here. Now, ideally, the Karo is going to be able to finish him off. Now, what I could have done here is I could have t picked out, taken that shell at the G-Saw. But the thing is, the G-Saw is looking in my direction. So if I peek, he can actually then take a shell at me. Like, I want to play aggressive, but not, not dumb, basically. So what we're going to do here, again, set up. And now I'm going to go forward possibly take out the T-49 or the Pantera. Like, you can see the Pantera right there, and if the Pantera would have moved back a little bit, I could have finished him off. Now, again, GSO focusing on the Karo. I'm going to try to watch this from the side and get this GSO very low, who's now turning his turret towards me. Remember, GSO, the mobility is decent, uh, especially the forward speed, 50 kilometers an hour. That's very good, but the traverse on this vehicle is quite lacking. Obviously, it is a turret tank store but the traverse on this vehicle is not the best. So you have to watch out for that quite a bit. 28 degrees, not ideal. Now, obviously, I'm going to go back here. I know some guy is going to come from behind me. T-49 is going to show up. Obviously, his accuracy on the move is terrible. So I can just take a snapshot and finish him off. And here comes the Pantera. And I take another snapshot to finish that guy off. And that's 3.5k damage, not too bad. And now I'm going to just drive forward because the g saw just saw me fire two shells. So he's probably going to hunt me. And I'm going to turn around, set up, and take a shot once the aim circle in. Yeah. I took a shot exactly when the entire tank was in the aim circle to make sure that it's going to hit. But of course, Volus Tank's Blitz is funny. And the shell hit the one part of the plate where there is enough angle to not be penned. Because remember, it doesn't have armor, but it does have angles. So that is a little bit of a difference there. Now, Astron, again, he's not looking at me. I'm just going to fire two shells into him. And already start over with 600 damage in this game right here. Remember, just because a tank has no armor doesn't mean it has no angles, right? A 89 degree plate, no matter how thin, is still going to bounce in most cases. I mean, unless it's like 5 millimeters, you're going to overmatch it. But most plates at extreme angles, no matter how thin they are, they are still going to bounce shells. They're still going to not pin the shells. So... While a tank like an IU-201, like a Leopard or g -Sol, they don't have any armor, they still have angled plates that, at extreme angles, will deflect some shells. And now I'm going to also look, play a little bit of a light tank here, pushing forward, spotting some enemies, because this vehicle can pull that off as well, because always showing what should be done isn't always great. Sometimes you can also show what shouldn't be done, or what maybe can be done. And in this case of the g -Sol, you can play it quite aggressively. Obviously, you might get punished for it. You might get RNG screwed, but it does work. Obviously, if you want to pay this, uh, play this optimally, then, well, that is not the guide for you right here. But this is the what can be done with the G-Saw, not sh what should be done with the G-Saw. Because, remember, this is a vehicle that is not for beginner players. Like, if you're looking for, oh, how to exactly play this vehicle, and no, 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 no. Here's the thing. If you don't already have good experience with a Canoniac Panzer, with a Borsig, with any other, like, Autoloader or paper tank stores, you should not purchase this vehicle, right? This is a tank for experienced players that want to have fun, that want to have a great time, that want to do high damage, or just fuck about, basically. So, do not buy this thing if you're a new player. If you don't know what you're doing, don't buy this tank. If you do know what you're doing, go ahead. Because it is a very interesting tank that can be played in a lot of different ways. Obviously, the more aggressive you play it, more likely you are to explode, but the more fun it can be. That's my two cents on this vehicle. Remember, this is not a beginner tank, so I'm not going to give you advice on how to play this vehicle as a beginner because you shouldn't play it as a beginner in the first place. Right? So, remember that. Like, there's no point advising you how to play a tank that you shouldn't be playing in the first place. So, if you are a beginner, start off with something easy. The Chimera is in the shop right now. If you want me to make a Chimera guide, put that down in the comment section and I'll make a chimera guide and I'll tell you how to play that vehicle if you're not a very experienced player but this vehicle it's for good hands only so with that said thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one goodbye